oh, this might be the last interview until Wales. Yeah, but uh, it is satisfying interview because it's the end of the split, right? And, uh, we did secure two splits, and I think this year has been way more shaky than the other than last year. So I'm super, super like happy with it. <laughs> I'm actually gonna start the interview like this right away. So. Yeah, congratulations on the victory. Again, this was a 3-0 victory against Fnatic. It almost feels like LEC is stuck in this reality group where you always end up with G2 Fnatic <laughs> finals and G2 does come out 3-0 victory. But yet again, the progress of getting to that victory was different. So would you say that you currently feel a bit different from your previous victory at the Spring Split? Um, I mean, I just feel like every time someone us in BO5, we learned so much from it, and last week we were pretty confident against Fnatic, but at the same time we didn't really play champions like Hecarim, Eve, Lucian, so we were at a huge disadvantage in draft, and that made us drop some games. Of course, we overall are making a lot of mistakes as well. I feel like even this BO3 against BO5 against Fnatic, where we won three games, it was super shaky, and we were throwing a lot, the games were winning, and the games that they were winning, they were of course, I mean, they threw the second game, but we also threw it in the first place, so they were in the in the uh, first seat position. So I think we have to improve a lot if we want to contest uh, the trophy at Worlds. But I mean, of course, we will uh, have bootcamp in China. We will leave very shortly to Kai. So I am hoping that uh, we can play much, much better at Worlds and super satisfied with the game that did secure trophies in Europe. And I know that you did talk about it on the broadcast, but I need to mention the River Shen your Shenzhou <laughs> jungle pick. <laughs> yeah, um, I know that TSM played it only last night and you seem to have been a bit inspired from Speaker's performance on it. But So can you tell me more about the Shen pick and how he contributes to the game? Because So I am like a Shen fanboy. I always like playing with Shen. Um, historically, whenever I can play Assassin and I have Shen my team or Hecarim or something, it's like so strong. He can just ult on me and I can 1v9. And I feel like if Shen can join from jungle, it's kind of like playing TF or Pantheon, right? But they don't scale that well and TF cannot jungle. So if you get level 6 on Shen, it's really hard for your opponents to do much because you can go push out the bot lane because you are not really weak in 3v3 uh, while being so tanky. But at the same time, if you know your top lane wants to all in right after the push out, you can ult. So I feel like if Shen jungle is a thing, he's going to be very, very strong, very OP because, yeah, you can clear decently well after Cinderhawk, on top of um, having like a very good skirmishes, having shield for your carries if you want to play peel, and then having like C being a CC bot. So yeah, I mean I was very negative though. Like when I first saw Shen, I was like, there's no way it can work, I cannot clear. I was actually recording Shen from a YouTube channel, so I already had like an uh, opinion about him. But after playing him in the morning, after I woke up, I actually thought he's very, very rushing Cinderhawk and it didn't really seem like Spika was falling behind in levels, even though he was playing Shen. I thought farming is like the most difficult part. Um, but it does seem like Broxham has played a lot that matchup. I feel like I could actually be good against Shen. You invade Raptors 7, you make sure he's counter trying well. I am not sure how confident I would be pulling off Shen against the Asian teams. I do think they are way better at like punishing stuff and, and playing aggressive. But it's something that I will keep in mind going towards. Random side question. For European and Western viewers who saw your River Shen, they would have immediately thought about um, TSM Speaker's Shen. But for the Korean viewers, they thought about an older Jungle Shen, Cloud Templar, back in Season 1 and 2. Are you familiar with that pick? <laughs> um, so I actually was playing on the Nay back in the day, like very back in the day. And people thought I'm Korean because I, have high ping. I had high ping playing from Europe. But like all the European players already left to Europe. So, uh, you know, back then Korea didn't have their servers yet, so Korean players would play there. And I actually had Cloud Templar in my friend list. Oh. I never really <laughs> spoke with him. Like, I am not familiar with his face. I wouldn't really know. But I, I am familiar with the name and I'm aware he was playing Shen. So, but I think back then Shen was also different. You would queue as you throw a blade at someone and you would mm -hmm. live. So I think Shen was slightly different back then. But I think if Shen Jung is a f then for sure, it's going to be very, very strong, very contested. And yeah, I mean, just create so much pressure at level six. You can always hold compared to being a top lane. Mm. And I did want to ask about the LPL and LCK junglers and how they're opting into more AP carry. But 
Like, again, congratulations on the victory. And I remember Luke's coming on in the broadcast say that he is happy, but he also feels a bit more relieved because this was a bit of a more difficult split for G2 compared to last split. So I did want to ask that question one more time. How are you feeling on the context of G2 split, if that is okay? Well, I think we took it slow. The whole year we were not really always like trying to perform super well. This especially we had a week off during the split. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, what happened to Luca happened. So that was like very difficult on the team. And on... and um, we also had some yeah struggles with off days and with off weeks. And we, we basically took it like a little bit too slow. And um, I think when we came back week six or seven, and we were like the five that we are right now, we were in a really dire position. And we had to fight for our lives to make it playoffs. And that was super stressful because, well, if you don't make playoffs, you don't make worlds. There is no gauntlet. So as we not matter at all. But mm -hmm. we did know if we make it playoffs, um, our seed is going pretty decent. We did have like a lot of points for split. And then we stole a game from Rogue, the game that they cheated us, kind of won. Uh, with Caps Nash still, and then we started winning every game, like five or six games in a row, heading into playoffs. Since we actually had time to play four or five days a week, practice what we want to practice, make sure that we are very confident in drafts, and then heading into playoffs. Of course, we were going like full speed ahead. Um, we kept practice. We knew what we want to play. I think I was pretty close-minded though, because I didn't think Karim is good, and mm -hmm. I felt like if people play it, it's going to be a free win. And that made us not play it for the game against Fnatic, which we also played against Shadow. And we were thinking about like playing it against Fnatic, but they had a very, very high prior on it. We didn't want to first pick it, mm -hmm. so we never got it last week. But um, after Shadow performance on Hecarim, we were like really ready to pull it off. And I'm pretty happy that we did adapt well and we started playing more of Graves, more of Hecarim. And we were more versatile, and that made our, our draft so much easier to play because we were more confident in like jungle matchups and so many lanes matchups. So mm -hmm. I think Fnatic made us stronger, and I'm I'm happy with that. It was yes, um, G2 experienced some difficulties throughout this split, but I also get a similar message from other teams around the world, not just LEC, but also in the LCK. LCS, I even talked to some of the LPL players with like the world situation changing and players don't know whether they're gonna when they're gonna come back on stage, when they're gonna like you know get their matches delayed. And I know that it changed a team atmosphere in a few teams. And I remember Perks again in Euphoria saying that he feels like the overall level of League of Legends has gone down for multiple regions. Um do you feel this this is the case? And I know that you can mostly only speak for G2, but how do you think the other league teams in general are coping with the situation? Yeah, I think the situation around the world, I don't really mention much because it's kind of the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like stuck in the position. I do think it's very exhausting though. I think mm -hmm. playing online is not as fun as playing offline. And I feel like the quality of the games is much worse as well. I do agree with Luca's statement that even watching LPL, you can see that they are a super strong region. Watching WG, you can see they're insane. But it, they also make mistakes, right? They also throw games, but they also like make weird plays that you wouldn't say are good. And even us, you know, we triot Fnatic today, and you say G2 and Fnatic are probably decent teams, even like comparing them to Asian, we are like not bad, right? But we were throwing so much, and we are playing like so bad. So <laughs> I'm happy with the win, but I do feel like there's a lot of kills going on right now, mm -hmm. uh, which could bring us closer to Chinese level, because at least we can like take these skirmishes and more confident them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, yeah, the level is not high and the situation is very annoying uh, with no stage games and yeah, with the fact that you don't really get like your visit with families often, you cannot really travel and the whole quarantine in Shanghai thing and everything is like kind of forced. So I'm happy going to Worlds and I'm very glad that the Worlds are taking place. I would prefer, I, I prefer that over cancel, like I prefer mm -hmm. that over MSI, even though we have to go through quarantine and all of this. But um, I am hoping that, you know, next year or maybe 2000, when 2022 at least, um, the world will like go back to like normal before we knew it, before the vi virus was way more fun. And something to mention is, I think after Worlds, um, the burnout could be so much bigger because 
I assume the virus is gonna stay with us until the end of the year, at least probably like half of the next year. So no one will be able to go for vacation. No one will be able to like enjoy his free time. Mm. Definitely you can go back to your family. Mm. Um, but it's not something that's enough for a lot of players, right? Because you do want to like take your mind off the game. Um, and maybe for someone it's fine to stay at home and do that. For me, for example, I really need to not be at home to, because otherwise I will always play league, which is not the greatest if you want to have some time off. So I am hoping that, um, yeah, we, we are going to have like a fun off season. Um, and I'm hoping that we will show a good performance at Worlds, but the world is what it is. And at least we didn't suffer in a way where our job is still there. You know, what we do didn't yeah. change. We can still like play and can do it online. So it should be great for that. <clears throat> Maybe the situation is why around the world we saw so many upsets because I looked at the LCS and Cloud9, who won the Spring Spurt, just dropped out of the world's race for worlds. And I look at the LPL and FEX, um, FEX and G2, uh, not G2, <laughs> I'm sorry, IG. <laughs> <laughs> FEX and G2 and uh, 2019. No, I was, no. As soon as I put FEX and G2 in the same sentence, that's your immediate reaction. No, I was going to say IG instead of G2. No, FEX and IG won't be making it to Worlds. And in Korea, we even don't know whether T1 will be back at Worlds. So it's been a volatile year for everyone. And I've asked this question to other G2 players. And I know that this has been asked so many times, but what makes G2 so robust and dominant? Like, you know, they had a shaky moments, but they didn't the tree didn't fall off from its root, so to speak. I want to talk about the I resilience. Feel like, I feel like um, I am not sure what it is for IGPX. I feel like since both worlds, maybe they don't have the same drive that they had pre-worlds. And of course, meta changed. And I feel like these teams didn't adapt as well as other teams did. For Cloud9, I completely don't know. I They were so dominant in NA, but I feel like NA level went up. I feel like in Spring Split, everyone was very bad in NA, but right now the top three teams are actually pretty strong. So it's understandable that Cloud9 couldn't just like roll over them. And I feel like some of the Cloud9 drafts were heavy on them playing better. And mm -hmm. this is something you shouldn't... I mean, if you are like confident enough, you can do it. But if your opponents are very good, you can like take every draft where you have to outplay them. And I think, you know, a lot of individual mistakes. And maybe if you focus more on stage, maybe that will be fixed. So of course, the online setting uh, is not helping teams like Cloud9. I think similar to IGFPX, but I believe in China, they still play it offline. And then SKT, um, I am also shocked. I think maybe it's also the fact that from the whole split being held offline in LCK to them having to play online um, is a huge downgrade for SKT. And I feel like Faker was always like important, but they tried to play with a new mid laner, um, which was good, but I don't know what's like the cohesion and what was like the mental strength of the team uh, during that series. And I also feel like a lot of, we, we in LCK compared to LAC, we had a lot of pauses and we had very, very long pauses. And when this happens, you get so tired, you get so exhausted. And even our games today against Fnatic was only three games. And they were like kind of long games. And I, I felt like super exhausted already. So when you have a game pause and you wait like, 20 minutes, I mean, it could really impact your play in a negative way. So, yeah, the conditions are just not perfect right now. But I am hoping SKT will make it through the gauntlet because, mm. I'm, of course, I'm a faker fanboy, always have <laughs> been. So, I want to play against SKT if that's possible. Um, I hope I won't regret it, but I would love to play against SKT again. Speaking of worlds and playing against another teams, what are some of the teams that you want to face at worlds? Everyone's quoting, everyone's talking about TS. Everyone's talking about Jingdong Gaming, everyone's talking about that one, but what's your personal take? Yeah, I mean, if SKT makes it, of course, SKT, like I'm then um, DWG, we will play them, hopefully, if they allow us, and they have been very dominant, as always. And maybe that's why they also won playoffs, because, you know, some people could say that they play worse on stage than they do online, because they have been always dominant online, but they didn't really win much before this year. I mean, I'm not trying to, like, diminish their success. I think they are super good, but, mm. you know, maybe we can win. Who knows, right? They are super strong, so mm. I think DWG, we can we can face them. I wouldn't mind. From teams that I would like to take my revenge on, there is no IG and there is no FPX, so that's kind of sad. 
but honestly, I feel like at this point playing any of the LPL teams and any of the LCK teams is going to be super fun and super difficult. So I'm just excited for Worlds. I don't even care who is in our group. I just want to play. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I think it's going to be like so hard, you yeah. know, so difficult. But I'm, I'm, I'm so it's it's fun. So that's what it's about, right? I was talking to Kenyon who said the next time he goes against G2, he wants the kill score to be 20 to 1. Wait, who said that? Kenyon. <laughs> Kenyon, oh <laughs> shit! Yeah, Kenyon is, um, I mean, Kenyon really last year was really strong, right? And mm -hmm. I think him and Nuguri, Nuguri are very, very strong top side. And yeah, it's not going to be easy against them, you know? Like, I think DWG is strong, so I don't think they can they can make us go 20 to 0, maybe in scrims, but not on stage, hopefully, because we do tend to perform better. Um, but they probably want to take revenge on us afterwards last year, so we should careful and we should brace ourselves for the DWG if we face them uh, in the quarters as some both teams make it out of groups because I don't think we can have them in another group. Which is good. Actually, yeah, <laughs> you're, true. you're right. Both first place, so you can't be in the same group. Yeah, mm. lucky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I think we actually went completely over the time, so thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. One last thing. Um, you did mention this in the broadcast interview, but there are so many fans watching LEC and G2 all around the world. Like this interview will have a lot of Korean viewers as well as a lot of Vietnamese fans. Like, you know, you do have a lot of Vietnamese fans. They call you Bangkok. I forgot the... Giant Bangkok, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, the forgotten son, of, uh, forgotten son of Vietnam is because mm. I always played poorly against Vietnamese teams and it always make them um, appreciate me because I would not but I'm kind of happy with the name and a message to like all the Vietnamese fans. I know that it, very, it, it sucks for Vietnam because you cannot really bring your own team to Worlds. Um, mm -hmm. And you would have opportunity to have two teams at Worlds, which would be great. But um, yeah, if you have no one to support right now, I, I think it's still very fun to watch the competition. And you can support me, uh, your you know, long lost Vietnamese brother that will try his best to succeed this time and leave the trophy. It sounds good. And next time I see you, you'll be at Wells. Thank you so much, yeah. Jankos, and congratulations so on the year. And I'll see you soon. Have a good flight. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>